gets a lot of pub from the university, and people seem to just forget Joyce DeWitt, which isn't fair. First quarter, we have no score. McQuail Lewis. 10-yard touchdown, 7-0 Ball State, and then Nate Davis back to throw, fires it to Lewis Johnson. There you see, you got to watch what you're doing. Locates one defender, finds the other one, and here's what, like, Barry Sanders would do. I'll stop, let those two guys hit each other, and we'll just keep moving on. That worked perfect. Just over a minute left in the half, third and 10. Davis hooks up with Darius Hill, 38-yard game. That would put Ball State first and goal two plays later. Davis, look at Nate, feeling the pressure, so he's going to flee to the end zone. Cardinals went into the half up 10, 24-14. They're up 17 in the third. Tim Hiller back to throw. Uh-oh, pick by Trey Lewis. Hiller, excellent player there. Uh, that's sort of an anomaly for him. 45-22, Ball State wins it, finishes the regular season unbeaten. Fans storm the field. They had fireworks. It's a big show because the kids from Muncie, maybe if Oklahoma wins up just a little bit, it could help. As Chris Fowler will explain as we hear from him in the booth. But first, let's get to the game. Colt McCoy to Quan Cosby. Oh, that's putting pop delicious. First down catch later on the drive. McCoy, number 12, has great feet. He scores from 14 yards out. Watch it again. Sell the fake. Up the middle. In. Also, a Heisman battle in this one for McCoy, trying to show voters stage all to himself. What a great player he is. Defensive coordinator Will Muschamp. Coaching Whitney for Mac Brown. He is pumped up for his defense, especially on third down, doing a great job third and long again. That's Jerry Johnson. The shovel pass is going to fall incomplete. More pressure there. That was Brian Arakpo on the end. Pressuring quarterback Stephen McGee and <laughs> Arakpo and the coach with a not so strong chest bump. Colt McCoy sacked by Terrence Frederick. Didn't see it till the last minute. Helmet on helmet. That'll make any parent wince. Is he okay? And back in November of 2006, the last time the Longhorns hosted AM, McCoy took a big hit there, carted off the field. Texas would lose the game and a chance to play in the Big 12 championship game. Back to Thursday night. Call the day. Bring late pressure, McCoy fires, complete, over the middle, darting to the end zone, touchdown! Brandon Collins got it! McCoy would pass Major Applewhite in this game for a single season Longhorn passing mark, 3,445 yards. Look at a move, a great quick release. Texas was up 21-3 at the half. He threw for two. He ran for two. There's his great feet again. Texas, they've done all about what they can possibly do this year. 11-1, coach. Seven years already in hand. Boise State hosting Fresno State, seemingly with little but a glimmer of BCS hope and its perfect season still up to play for on senior day. Senior Bush Hamden. Uh, honored with sort of a symbolic start over freshman Kellen Moore. This was his only pass, and it really didn't work out. His first career start, it's a pick six. Damian Owens, Fresno up 7-0 early. They would be outscored 61-3 to from that point on. That's a run. Yeah, Kellen Moore comes in. Pretty good, if you haven't heard of him. 13th in the nation in passing. Third and goal, Jeremy Childs. And Boise, after that early pick six, up 13-10 at halftime. Third quarter, and here is the run. It continues, and it's been a good run. Jeremy Avery up the middle. That is 10 unanswered by Boise State. Remember, it's Boise. They get very upset if you say Boise. It's like Ernie else. Nice. Thing. Good call. Clemson, another one. Kyle Wilson. Look at Kyle Wilson matriculate the ball up the blue field. His third punt return for a score this month. 90 yards, 17 unanswered by the Boise State Broncos. Later in the third. Reverse! Tanya Best downfield, Julian Hawkins, 24 unanswered. <laughs> yeah, talk about no help and rotating over in the whole thing. Moore, Tommy Gallardo, Moore, 17 of 23, 213, 31 unanswered for Boise State. They're up 41-10, but wait, there's more, Ian Johnson. Pat Hill said afterward, I've never been in a game where it got that out of control. 38 unanswered, and wait, they're not done yet. Now how much would you pay? Johnson, he ran for 128. Ties Marshall Falk for the all-time whack rushing touchdown mark, 57. At least they blocked the extra point. 
So they're up to 44 unanswered. DJ Harper makes it 51 unanswered. 48 after halftime. Boise State 12-0. The Broncos' third unbeaten season since 2004. Hello, humanitarian bowl. Sort of. In the third, West Virginia down 7-6. Speaking of nightmares, Pat White. He came in with 4,292 rushing yards in his career, ranking him the all-time leader in FBS history by quarterbacks. He had 93 in this one, and that play right there gives West Virginia their first lead in the third quarter. It's 12 to 7. Now it's 15 to 7. White intercepted. Giovanni Chapel tackled by West Virginia. Costly mistake. Less than a minute later, Pittsburgh inside the five. LaShawn McCoy, 183 yards. What a year he is having couple of touchdowns and Pittsburgh has a lead uh, or makes it down 15 13 they went for two to try to tie it didn't happen next drive for West Virginia third and 11 Noel Devine stopped short West Virginia forced to punt Pittsburgh got to play good defense when you're down down by two McCoy again and Pittsburgh goes up 19 15 great finish West Virginia had a good chance down the end but they hold on second straight year Pittsburgh wins the backyard ball. Phenomenal finish at War Memorial in Little Rock, Arkansas, hosting LSU. It's Jordan Jefferson's first start of the year for the Tigers. Third quarter, they're trying to solve this quarterback problem all year long. And this may be the answer. Ooh. Brandon LaFell, LSU's up 30 to 14. Speaking of quarterback scenarios, Casey Dick replaces little brother Nathan Dick, started the second half, and this worked out. Jarius Wright. Now you're, you're saying, hey, uh, how did Wright get so open? Well, it's oh. the old double move. Sure. Chris Hawkins, Arkansas within nine. Fourth quarter. Casey Dick trying to keep this thing going. Intercepted Chris Hawkins. Hawkins flag for pass interference, though. So it's first down Razorbacks. You'll see. You cannot extend the arm. Hawkins extends his right arm right there. They see that automatically. The official in perfect position right behind trailing the play. Sees it, throws the flag. That's a penalty. Later in the drive, fourth and ten. Got to have it here. But here comes Perry Riley. Boom. Arkansas running out of time. Later in the game, facing a fourth and six. Only 125 to go. Remember, they can take the lead with a touchdown in the PAT. Carlton Salters. That's a first down. And now they're matriculating the ball down the field. Another fourth and one here. They're converting all these fours. London Crawford. Arkansas, they kick it and go up 31-30 in the final minute. So 16 seconds left. Watch the official here. Terrence Tolliver is about to make the catch. Right there's the official, but he's got to oh. hurdle the official. Could have gotten LSU a lot closer. Instead, they have to kick a game winner from 63. Oh. Career long of 52. The snap is down. The kick is up. Ooh. It is not going to be long enough, and Arkansas wins the ball game. The Razorbacks beat LSU on the season's final day. They keep the golden boot. LSU 3-5 and five in the SEC, but 7-5 and five overall. Colorado, Nebraska. Great matchup if it was 1994. Sure. But it, it is part of Rivalry Friday. Quarterback Joe Gans, Nebraska, trying to redeem last season's loss to Colorado that prevented them from going to a bowl game. Absolute redemption game for me, for the seniors, for everyone who was a part of last year. Absolutely. That is one thing on our mind is to see how they'll like sitting at home watching everyone else play like we did last year. Colorado bowl eligible with a win. Oh, First boy. quarter, Dan's Mike McNeil ties the game at 14. Now remember, Nebraska's Bo Pelini, he coached at LSU from 05 to 07. And last year, against South Carolina, LSU had a, a terrific fake field goal attempt. Watch this right here. It's the no look. Hello. And that's an easy score. Well, it's just sort of a casual sort of flick. You just sort of loft the that's ball all. up there. You don't even need to look. Really. That's it, yeah. So, yeah, so they should have this down. So he, you know, he goes in Nebraska. We're gonna we're gonna run this play at a key time in our big rivalry game, and here it is. Whoops. Uh oh. Alex Henry set to to kick the field goal, but you saw Jimmy Smith. He lit up for a second, and then he picks off the play. This is the great view here. Hello, lady, <laughs> lady. <laughs> <laughs> and that ties the game at 24. Fourth quarter. Nebraska down 31-30. Great game. Gans sacked. Oh boy, really sacked. Patrick Mankey with the sack. Now Pelini decides to go for the field goal from 57 yards. Another long field goal attempt. No. Going. No. Going. No. Good. Wow. No, 
Nebraska up 33-31. Just over a minute to play. Last chance for Colorado. Trying to get bowl eligible. Cody Hawkins is picked off, and Nebraska gets their redemption 40 to 5.